Welcome, dear viewers of the Syrian television, to this special symposium on the project of the artificial kidney at Al Andalus University for Medical Sciences, which is held within the activities of the International Exhibition of Higher Education and Training. Al Andalus University for Medical Sciences seeks to achieve progress in the fields of science, technology, and medical practice, and help develop and achieve the goals of human civilization and expand the horizons of human knowledge and contribute to the achievement of national efficiency and economic and social development. The university also seeks to secure jobs for students for five years after graduation and correspond with European and American universities so that our students are admitted to these universities without any problems. The university was established after the Engineering Company for Educational Establishments and Al Andalus Group for Medical Sciences and its services established the core of the university. I would like to welcome our guests for this evening, Dr. Ayham Darwish, a professor in the Faculty of Medical Engineering at Al Andalus University. Thank you, glad to be here. And I would like to welcome Engineer Hiba Isa, a teacher in the Faculty of Medical Engineering at Al Andalus University. Good evening, happy to be here and thank you for having us. Let's start with you, Ms. Hiba. What can you tell us about the university and the bodies affiliated with it? What is the message that the university wants to send through teaching? Well, first of all, as you have previously mentioned, Al Andalus University is specialized in medical sciences and has six faculties which are medicine, dentistry, pharmacy, medical engineering, nursing, and hospital management. Of course, I would like to point out that the Faculty of Medical Engineering is the second faculty of the field of medical engineering in Syria, and the Faculty of Hospital Management is the only one in Syria. Now, to talk about the purpose and goals of Al Andalus University. The aim of the university is to graduate qualified and trained students who are able to run research projects and manage medical centers all throughout Syria in cooperation with twin universities. The university's ambition is to build a private hospital affiliated with Al Andalus University in each city in Syria, which would enable us to secure job opportunities for our students and make them able to work in research centers. Of course, all of these projects done by the university have financial return, and with this financial return, Al Andalus University will be able to cancel its tuition fees in the future, and of course, our door is always open for students with high qualifications and creativity. I would like to mention the bodies affiliated to Al Andalus University. There is the Scientific Research Authority, the Scientific Research Bank, the Center for Quality Assurance, the Office of International Relations, and the Language Support Center. Let's start with the Scientific Research Bank. Every student at the university has an account at the Scientific Research Bank. The staff of the bank provide the latest research and scientific articles published around the world so the students can translate them. And that way, the students can develop their English language skills and also be updated on all new science and research. And that way, the students can develop their English language skills and also be updated on all new science and research. The Scientific Research Authority takes these articles translated by students from all specialties and frames them within research projects. So the research project can be participated in by students from Faculty of Medicine or students from the Faculty of Medical Engineering, etc. That way, we could have a research project for each of the faculties of the university. The Office of International Relations is for student exchange between Al Andalus University and international universities, and to do joint research projects between universities. In the Quality Assurance Center, we apply the standards and conditions of the international quality and accreditation on the bodies and faculties of the university, all according to the Ministry of Higher Education. The Language Support Center is one of the most important centers and educational facilities in the university because it educates students from the first year until graduation 
and trains them to improve their English language skills and prepares them to take the TOEFL certificate, so the students must pass the TOEFL exam by graduation. There is also French and German language courses for those interested and there will be courses in other languages in the future. Well, good luck to everyone. Now let's go back to Dr. Aham. Is there monitoring of the administrative processes in the university in all these bodies and specialties? Of course, the monitoring starts with the administrative process. In fact, all these bodies work together to serve the student. And in the administrative aspect, the student is considered as part of the decision-making process. The student's opinion and observations about the teaching process, the service process, and the complementary services such as transportation and food are constantly taken into consideration. Then it moves towards the deanship of the university and the specialized university councils, scientific affairs council and administrative affairs council, ending with the university council and the board of trustees. They develop the strategic plans of the university and work to make note of all observations and develop them to suit the scientific and medical needs of the community. The scientific process starts with the teaching process. It involves setting the lecture and attendance according to the fingerprint system and setting the time of the lecture under the guidance of the faculty members so that the lecture time is at least 100 minutes long, and the lecture is video recorded so the student can re-watch it in case of absence. Regarding the educational process, there are spacious labs and classrooms that are fully equipped with all necessary devices, tools, and teaching aids, which are all done according to the standards of the Ministry of Higher Education. The university also pays close attention to the scientific research and publishing. We divide students into research groups since their first year at the university, and every faculty has its own research project. For example, the project of the artificial kidney, which is the theme of this interview, is the research project of the Faculty of Medicine. The aim of this project is to help students develop their skills and to spread the knowledge as widely and as efficiently as possible. Ms. Hiba, can you talk to us about how the university takes care of the students and monitors their scientific and educational progress? Of course, as we have mentioned before, the university pays close attention to language through the Language Center and to scientific research through the Scientific Research Bank since the student is first admitted to the university. We are capable of doing various courses and seminars for students with good qualifications and who are interested in science. Now I want to talk about the Academic Supervision Committee. You see, every year and for every faculty, we have an Academic Supervision Committee to be in direct contact with students to gather their complaints and productive criticism. The student's opinion is very important. This committee works as a link between the student and the deanship of the faculty and the administration of this university. We have regular meetings in which we work to develop everything we need to develop, analyze the feedback received from students regarding university housing, transportation, or anything related to teaching. We have a duty in these periodic meetings to solve all problems that concern students and we are a link between the student and his parents. We stand by students in any problem that they may face during their study in the university. So there's a good relationship between the university and its students. Dr. Aham, what are the measures taken by the university administration to obtain international rankings? Because of course, building a strong relationship with students should lead to working to achieve high rankings among international universities. 
When talking about the rankings, we're talking about the university's interest in scientific research. It dedicates part of its revenue to support researchers in scientific research. That is done by providing equipment and organizing conferences and exhibitions and dedicating prizes for each researcher who publishes in a well-known scientific journal. And speaking in numbers, the university has achieved more than 200 researchers in well-known international journals, either written by faculty members only or with student participation. We pay close attention to the website. It contains student information like the classes schedule, the attendance charts, and the university's announcements for training courses and so on. All these elements help the ranking of the university. Currently, the university is rated 12 between public and private universities locally and 13,000 internationally. It is worth noting that it has progressed by more than 500 ranks from the rankings of the previous year which shows the constant progress of the university and its administrative and scientific units. Now, let's go back to Ms. Hiba. What can you tell us about the Artificial Kidney Project, its future goals and objectives? What is the importance of this project for the university and for society? Well, first of all, the importance of this project comes from the fact that there are approximately 2 million people who suffer from kidney failure around the world, and this number is constantly increasing. So, healing from kidney failure is a dream for those patients. This dream is realized by finding a perfect alternative, an artificial kidney. The goal of this project is to find a perfect solution by making an artificial implantable kidney made by local expertise and with cooperation with twin universities. That means that there is monitoring for this project, right? Yes, there is. Dr. Aham, tell us about the scientific and administrative planning for this project, because when there is constant monitoring, there should be a lot of planning. Yes, of course. The goal of this project, aside from the humanitarian and scientific aspect, is obtaining a Nobel Prize in Science in 2035 for the Artificial Implantable Kidney Project. And concerning the scientific and administrative planning aspect, as we previously mentioned, the administrative planning is done by cooperation between the university and all the research bodies interested in this research like the Public Authority of Biotechnology, Excellence and Creativity Commission, Syrian Inventors Committee, and twin public or international universities. The scientific planning is done by the Scientific Research Bank. Each interested student is required to register in the Scientific Research Bank and search within the research themes of the artificial implantable kidney. The artificial kidney project is divided into several sections and sub-research aspects. Students, technical staff, and faculty members are required to register to do one of these research aspects and organize work between research teams and work to achieve the goals in each step from training courses to formulating their ideas into scientific or applied results. And when there is a project with such organization, there are of course conditions and requirements for applicants who want to participate in this project. So what are these requirements? We don't really see them as requirements. That's why we would like to take this opportunity to invite and encourage all establishments, researchers and students, 
or anyone who has done a research paper to cooperate with Al Andalus University on this project, because it's a great humanitarian project in addition to being a breakthrough in scientific research. And concerning the requirements, the person or researcher must pass an IQ test and obtain either the TOEFL or IELTS certificate. Dr. Aham, would you like to add something? Yes, to continue what Ms. Hiba said, Al Andalus University is honored to cooperate with all governmental or independent bodies. The project was divided into several aspects mathematics, physics, chemistry, informatics engineering, medical engineering, medicine, and administration. Those seven aspects are according to the number of Syrian universities which will each lead one aspect. Al Andalus University is honored to take the role of the secretary of these universities. The goal is to reach a prototype which we can give to our community. Good luck to all! Those who wish to apply should send us an email and check out the outline of this project and fill the application telling us their reason for applying. Ms. Hiba, what are the main sections and dimensions of the artificial kidney? Of course, the artificial kidney is a hand-sized cube of 7 cm long and 3.5 cm wide and 3.5 cm thick and consists of 7 layers. The first and second layer is a blood analysis, so this layer determines the conditions of the blood purification. The third layer is also important, because it mimics the functions of the normal kidney. In that layer, blood components should be separated from waste. The fourth and fifth layer are an examination of the results of the analysis, and also an examination of the effectiveness of the process that separates blood from waste. The sixth layer is connecting the patient to technical support centers. The seventh and last layer is a GPS that can locate the patient in case of emergency and direct him to the closest medical center in his area. Could the process of locating the patient be hard for the researcher and faculty members? No, not at all. It's a simple technology. Dr. Aham, would you like to add something? Well, communication technologies are well known and available. For example, cars can identify places such as shopping malls and libraries. So we chose to use the GPS technology to locate patients holding the kidney and link them to technical and health support centers in case of any emergency or for the periodic maintenance of this product. Artificial kidneys are connected to the arteries and veins and to the discharge paths of the patient through a simple surgery. So, what are the main features of the proposed kidney? Can you talk about the study in detail? Yes, of course. We have taken the artificial kidney solution as an alternative to the available solutions, which are either dialysis, which is a very exhausting technical solution and needs long hours, which affects the physical and psychological conditions of the patient. Or the portable kidney, which requires long hours and high technology and is a burden on the movement of the patient. Or finally, the transplantation of organs or the transfer of organs from a donor to the patient, which is a physical burden on the patient and is not always available, 
due to biocompatibility and the risk of death while waiting for a compatible donor. And while we're talking about the artificial kidney, I would like to mention a research done in the University of San Francisco, which develops an artificial kidney using nanotechnology to create and develop a bioreactor that separates blood components based on size. In our device, we rely on another principle, the principle of energy identity. It depends on body temperature at the beginning, where electrical coverage is generated by human body temperature, 37 degrees, and distinguishes between blood components and harmful components, waste, which is through the interaction between heat and chemical structure of these components to contribute to the complete separation between them. I want to talk about the energy identity of the artificial kidney. It is a stage that is 28 mm wide and consists of four substages. The first stage is the communication with the components of blood and giving the appropriate identity depending on the chemical composition and electronic charges for each component. In the second stage, the interaction with blood components is checked. In the third stage, these blood components are separated from the waste products that should be discarded. The fourth stage is the audit of the energy-based separation process. We can say that the kidney stage is the most important stage of the artificial kidney system launched by Al Andalus University. I would like to add that the artificial kidney is compatible with the human body and rust-proof. It has no negative effects on the human body and does not expose the patient to any danger. So, let's talk about the interaction of students with this project when it was launched by the university. Did they react well to this project? Everyone was excited, given their existing knowledge of research since the first year. They were excited to participate in a scientific and medical breakthrough that other countries did not reach. You see, this research is also being done at the University of San Francisco in America. We are all confident that the project is on the right track and it will see the light with the help and expertise of Syrian doctors and researchers. It is a high ambition and a big challenge for Al Andalus University. The university is completely dedicated to this project and that is shown through the work of faculty members and through encouraging our students. Our goal is to work with one another as a scientific, administrative and research unit and in cooperation with public universities. There is constant support from the Ministry of Higher Education and other social establishments. They provide us with researchers and scientific ideas which could help develop these kinds of studies. Our hope is to introduce this product to our community in less than five years, which is considered a short period of time. So, when can students participate in this research project? Are there any specific requirements? As we previously mentioned, any student who has the will to participate in a research outside the curriculum and outside the language course can participate in this project. It can either be by watching the introductory video or the box diagram of the implantable kidney, or by participating in the actual implementation of this project, which can include system analysis and working with high-tech devices.
What are the requirements for students outside Al-Andalus University to participate in this project? Students outside Al-Andalus University can participate in this project as long as they have the IELTS or TOEFL certificate and must pass an IQ test. We remind students one more time to send an email to Al-Andalus University if they want to participate in this project. Ms. Hiba, what is the message that you would like to send to our viewers and students of Al-Andalus University in particular? I would like to send a message of love and appreciation to Al-Andalus University and offer an invitation to attend the conference at the Faculty of Medicine with the theme Artificial Kidney Project under the auspices of the Minister of Higher Education in cooperation with twin universities on the 14th of November 2019. We invite everyone to participate in this project which is on the right tracks to be achieved with our local expertise. I would also like to pay tribute to our President, Dr. Bashar al-Assad, and the First Lady, Asma al-Assad, and I would like to thank them for being the first supporters of science, scientists, students, researchers, and excellence. Dr. Aham, what message would you like to send at the end of this interview? I would like to thank the Syrian television for having us. And I would like to thank, on behalf of the team, all administrators, researchers, and students at Al-Andalus University, because without them, we wouldn't have reached this stage in our project. We are confident that this project is on the right tracks. This device will be manufactured in Germany and with American accreditation according to the requirements of the FDA. I would like to thank our beloved President, Dr. Bashar al-Assad, and the First Lady for their never-ending support and appreciation for science, scientists, and scientific research. I want to thank our courageous Syrian army and tell them that Syria is okay, our students are okay, and that Syria, just like its army, is going through the toughest challenges in scientific battles. We are hopeful and we believe in the capabilities and expertise of our students. I would like to add that the proposed price for the artificial kidney in the project of the University of San Francisco is $10,000 and the suggested price for the artificial kidney in Syria is $1,000 and there will be alterations in the product to suit women, men and children. It will be made with our local expertise and the price will suit everyone. And I want to thank the Syrian TV for hosting this interview. Now we have reached the end of the symposium. I would like to thank Dr. Ayham Darwish, an assistant professor in the Faculty of Medical Engineering at Al-Andalus University. Thank you very much. I would like to thank engineer Hibatullah Isa, teacher in the Faculty of Medical Engineering at Al-Andalus University. Big thanks to you and to the Syrian television for hosting us today. Big thanks to our viewers. Thank you for watching the symposium about the project of the artificial kidney at Al-Andalus University for Medical Sciences within the activities of the International Exhibition of High Education and Training.